time is 8.50. Uh, this is not the normal time that I would be davening. It's a little bit late for me. But uh, today we have a special surprise. We are going to check out something happening at Rabbi Alon Anaba's shul. That's right. Bokotov Hebra. We're standing outside of Rabbi Alona Navas Shul. There's something going down inside. We're gonna go check it out. Flight 613, direct non-stop flight to Ain Soap is about to take off, so buckle up my friends. <laughs> can't do anything without food. You guys don't know. Herring, Jewish delicacy. Yum. With the cracker. Mm. <laughs> I'm sitting here with my good friend, Abishraga Cohen, <laughs> one of the one of the pillars of the Tzfat community. And this is a huge day for him. His son is putting on tefillin, and wrapping tefillin for the very first time in his life. Yes, incredible day. It's my first bar mitzvah. So what I like to say is just Lachaim to Rabrom, Rabbi Rom. Thank you for all the incredible, amazing things you do for us. That's great, great. great. Nobody wants to hear about Rabbi Rav. No, they want to hear about no, you my, my, and your son my, who got filmed for the first day. It's my simcha, so I want to share it with you. And my bracha to you and may we be zeichen. Amen. We share simchas together by your son's bar mitzvah, by your... <laughs> by your... Uh, all your children's simchas, by your Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Shalachai, may we be zeichen to continuously grow and raise our children. Amen, amen. Okay, that was super fun. Uh, about 11.15, gotta get to class. Maybe shouldn't have had so many L'chaims. <laughs> Me and Trag, we both have something in common. Um, both of our sons are doing uh, bar mitzvah this year. And as a BT rabbi, uh, raising an FFB kid, that's yeshiva speak, uh, BT Baal Tshuva and FFB from from birth. So here's the thing, as a Baal Tshuva rabbi, uh, raising a from from birth kid, uh, I find it more and more weighing on my mind really how to go about and really fully and totally instill the love of Torah in him. So as somebody who grew up in a super secular home, um, I searched and I found my Judaism. I found Torah and I chose Torah and I choose Torah. I choose Torah every single day. Like I love Torah. Mamish love it with like every nerve and cell and fiber of my being. Um, I'm like a Torah junkie. I have a family now. I'm raising um, um, my children and my oldest son, who's going to be bar mitzvah soon. Um, does not seem to have the same fire and passion and inspiration for Torah um, like I do. 
in the end, he's a kid. And I remember when I was a kid, and I remember how much I hated when people thought that they knew what was the best for me. I wanted to be able to make my own choices, my own decisions. And as much as I would love for him to follow in my footsteps, I am constantly reminding myself of what Shlomo Amelch, King Solomon said, Chnoch lanar al pidarko, that the secret to all education and child raising is to educate them according to their way. Al pidarko is not the father's way, but it's the child's way, which means you gotta see the kid. You have to see the child. You have to see what they're about, what are their qualities and what are their skill sets and develop those, even though they might not be the same as mine. And like, yo, that could be like a seriously scary thing. Because if he doesn't um, follow in my footsteps and he chooses a completely different path than I have, then what does that mean for me? I mean, like, doing some soul searching, in my own animal soul, my ego, there is definitely this feeling that if I successfully pass on the tradition to him, then that means I did it right. It means that the choices that I made and the Judaism that I embraced and the Torah that I live, it was uh, enough to be able to inspire uh, the next generation and pass it on. But if he doesn't follow that path, then I guess I was wrong. I guess I didn't do it right. And those are the feelings that are happening in the inner dimensions, in the inner recesses of my nefesh bami, my animal soul, the subconscious mind, if you will. We just read in last week's Parsha in, to in Toldot that Yitzchak has to leave the land of Canaan, but God says, no, you are not going to be like your father Avraham. You're gonna stay at home. You're gonna stay within the confines of the Kedusha, of the holiness of Eretz Israel. However, in this week's Parsha, we learn about Yaakov. Yaakov is the one that has to now go on a journey and he's going to mess with some bad dudes right now, but he has to find himself. He has to have the courage and strength to be able to go out into the world to overcome obstacles, to deal with all the craziness and to be able to trust our children, to be able to trust him that he's going to um, make the right decisions and you know what sometimes he's gonna mess up sometimes he's gonna fall sometimes he might get hurt <clears throat> but i think the most powerful um lesson that i learned from the, these parshas is not in the relationship between parent and child yitzchak and yaakov but the secret really i think lies in yitzchak and asaf yaakov's brother asaf is a bad dude Torah says something mamish incredible. It says Yitzchak loved Esau. Yitzchak loves Esau. And you gotta be like, what? This like problematic child, the one that's always getting called into the principal's office, the one that's always doing what he shouldn't be doing, going to the places where he should not be. And, but nonetheless, Yitzchak still loves him. And I think that's the real, test as a parent, to be able to truly love my child simply for who he is and not for what he does. The mystics talk about essential love, loving someone simply for the fact that we are connected, they're a part of me, and it's not dependent on any condition. It's not dependent on anything that they do. And I think deep down, that's what a lot of us are looking for. We also want to be loved for who we are and not for what we do. He's gonna have to make his own choices. He's gonna have to choose the life that he wants to live. And I think real success as a parent for me is to truly love him and be there for him no matter what he chooses, no matter which way he wants to live 
his life. I always am going to be reminded by what the Lubavitcher Rebbe says. The Rebbe says that this generation is the first generation to experience Mashiach consciousness, that it's the first generation to, to enter into the Geula and the spiritual DNA, genetic makeup of the children are different than once upon a time. And it's our responsibility, the Rebbe says, to believe in them, to trust them, that they are going to do extraordinary things. They are extraordinary people. So it's really up to me to be able to constantly see them with my divine soul, see, see them with my Mashiach eyes and love and support them in every way possible. No, uh, what do you say about Abba Shachar on YouTube? He doesn't speak a word of English. He's my boy. I love him. Mama? <laughs>